That was a four one. <laughs> I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, April 17th, 2018 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Are we certified uh, in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, the agenda was posted on the 12th of April at 11 a.m. Thank you, John. We will now have the presentation of the colors by the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department Honor Guard. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready? Forward. Thank you, Honor Guard. Now we'll have our invocation. Father Gary Wagner. Despite my relationship to the chairman, this prayer will be nonpartisan. <laughs> Holy One, you are the hidden and the manifest, the source of all being and the bringer of peace. In this springtime of the year when snow still covers the land, as the days grow longer and the nights vanish more quickly, we are grateful for the many blessings of the past and resolve to work for an even better future. Today we humbly ask you to enlighten any darkness in the hearts 
of those gathered here who have been entrusted with the grave responsibility of governing the people of Sheboygan County. May they resist any temptation to act out of selfish interests. May they seek the common good of the people of this beautiful county. Give them wisdom they need to discern what is right and true. Give them the knowledge they need to enact policies which bring hope to the poor, the weak, and the vulnerable. Give them the understanding and goodwill they need to listen to one another in charity, especially as they choose their leaders. On this April day, when we are most aware of our temporal obligations, may we not neglect the demands of the spirit. As they go about the business of the people, may the members of this body commit themselves to listen to the better angels of their nature as they seek to do the will of the people. God of life, may we not forget that our nation is still at war in far off lands. Keep safe those who have answered the call to serve their country. Hasten their return to home and family. With great sadness, we graciously ask you to comfort the loved ones of those who have answered the call of duty and made the ultimate sacrifice in the defense of our nation and in the cause of liberty and justice. With a gratitude that can never equal their valor, we honor the brave service of our fallen soldiers and we pause now to commend them to you. Bless them with final peace and endless joy. In the name of all that is holy, we pray now and forever, amen. Amen. Thank you, Gary. It's going to cost me at least a dinner for sure. No. <laughs> That's okay. We're brothers. That's how brothers are to each other. Okay, roll call. Four supervisors present. Thank you. Administration of the oaths of office. Judge Edward Stengel. Uh, thank you. It's really my honor again to be here and to be able to participate in these proceedings. I've been coming into this building for a little over 40 years at this point, and many of you have served on the county board for almost that long. That was not meant to be anything derogatory. <laughs> uh, John said if I did this and I, and I did a good job, I could keep coming to the legislative breakfasts, so I'm doing the very best I can. But it's really been my honor to be able to be a part of all this and to serve with you, the citizens of Sheboygan County. And a part of that honor is to witness day in and day out the uh, many great people that we have working for Sheboygan County who support the courts and who work in all the other capacities that support and provide for the citizens of Sheboygan. And certainly you people who have served on the county board and who will serve on the county board are a large part of that. I think Sheboygan County, as I have gone around the state and talked to other judges, is somewhat unique in the ongoing cooperative effort that we get at all levels of our government. And I think it is certainly a very important thing that we continue to work together and meet our goals in serving the citizens that have elected us to these positions. And I hope that we will continue to have all the support that we've had in the past. We owe a lot of our success to the cooperation and support of the people that we work with, you, with us and certainly the county board who has always supported us and the county administration. So with that, it's my pleasure to administer the oath of office. I'd like to have you stand. Please raise your right hand. And when I indicate to uh, please state your name, I trust each and every one of you know your name and you'll be able to insert it. And also when we get to the part where you indicate the district that you're representing. I and please state your name. Swear or affirm. 
that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge. And will faithfully and impartially discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of. County Board Supervisor District Number. County Board Supervisor District 17. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. And thank you very much for your service and the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Next, we have some introduction of department heads and introductory statements by the county administrator. Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. It feels a little festive in the room tonight, and as it should. Uh, what a tremendous evening. I want to really thank and, and welcome our, our guests and family members and it was a pleasure to meet Tom's brother and have him share some words as well as Judge Stangle to be here to give the oath and, and of course our Sheriff's Department always does such a wonderful job representing us through the Honor Guard so thank you for that. Thank you Don Brula and Paul Gruber for stepping up and welcome to the Sheboygan County Board. Mike Oji also deserves a welcome back. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. He had a conflict, but we, we welcome Mike Oji back. And this afternoon, we had the brief orientation with, with Paul and Don, and I, I felt almost badly for them. We threw so much information at them in such a short period of time, and I want to thank the county clerk and the corporation council, our IT director, our human resources director, we all got together and very quickly talked about roles and responsibilities, a very strong committee structure, the difference between resolutions and ordinances, Robert's rules of order, code of ethics, open meetings and public record laws, information technology, and the extensive supervisor salary and per diem payments. <laughs> like any new job, it, it takes time. It takes time to get that experience and really to be good at what you do. And I think Tom Wagner shared some really good advice as I've heard from a number of chair persons over the years. Don't be too hard on yourself. Take the time to listen and learn and lean on many of the very good people you are surrounded by. You know, Ed Stangle mentioned the experience of this county board. We have a number of highly experienced and respected county board supervisors. And there's one on each side of you that no doubt would be willing to help you be successful. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And of course, this evening we're surrounded by our department heads and, and key management team. And they as well are outstanding and ready to assist and do all we can to be successful. You know, we, we listen in this organization, we work together to problem solve, and we deliver. This organization delivers. Chairman Wagner and our executive committee, all of the liaison committees had a highly successful term the last couple of years, and we have a lot ahead of us. But you are, you are now part of an organization, as you, as you quickly may recall from this afternoon, of 825 employees working with 19 departments, administering a $150 million budget, over 207 programs and services. There is so much to learn in this organization. There's so many opportunities to problem solve. There are so many opportunities to help people in need. And this organization has a track record of success. We're the eighth largest employer in Sheboygan County. Many people don't appreciate that unless you're part of this organization. Following Kohler, Bemis, Sheboygan Area School District, NEMAX, Sargento, Aurora, and Johnsonville Sausage. And we certainly aren't striving to be number one. In fact, if you look at our staffing, we've gone from a high of about 1,350 in 2003 to 825 today. We've had nearly a 40% reduction in our staffing. And that doesn't just happen. 
It occurs over time through thoughtful collaboration, streamlining, consolidating, working together. I'm proud of our track record. I'm proud of this organization. And again, if you haven't been a part of it, if you're not part of the Sheboygan County family, it's tough to really fully appreciate the breadth and diversity of this organization. Quick snapshot, 19 departments, 19 departments administering $149 million budget, $48 million of property tax levy, the rest state, federal, private pay. Health and Human Services, $34 million operation, over 40 programs administered there. The Sheriff's Department, $24 million operation. Transportation Department, $19 million operation. And Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center, $13 million. Those are the big four, comprise two-thirds of our budgets alone. If those four aren't streamlining, gaining efficiencies, working in collaboration in the budget process, it's real difficult for the rest of the departments to make the difference up. The remaining departments, building services, clerk of courts, corporation council, county clerk, court commissioner, district attorney, finance, human resources, information technology, medical examiner, planning and conservation, register and deeds, treasure real property listing, University of Wisconsin Extension and veteran services. I can't imagine you being bored in this organization. There is so much going on, so many opportunities, to make good things happen. It's complex. And really, as we've shared before, and I think as many of us lead by example, it comes down to collaboration. We work together. The tone is set by the county board chair. It's set by our management team. It's set by each and every county board supervisor. We expect collaboration helping one another be successful, working together. Just some quick examples. And this was just during the last couple of years. Just the last couple of years. We established the Amsterdam Dunes Wetland and Mitigation Bank and Preservation Area. Roger Destruti was chairman at the time. Tom Wagner was vice chairman at the time. Incredible accomplishment. We constructed a ring of fiber in partnership with the city and school district. We established an information technology disaster recovery system. We implemented, through the courageous leadership of Chairman Wagner and everyone sitting in this room, the one half percent county sales tax to help maintain a safe and reliable transportation system, reduce borrowing, provide direct property tax relief, share sales tax revenue with other municipalities to help them be successful with their own transportation needs. That was courageous, and we are now poised for success as a result of it. The district attorney, I see Joel here today. This is a difficult person to get in touch with because he is busy as all of our department heads are. I am so proud of the work Joel's been doing. And the district attorney, as you know, partnered with the Health and Human Services Department. We added an assistant district attorney. Not many counties have done this. The county board did so, so we can focus more on children's welfare and permanency when it comes to adoption. Impressive. We established an opioid detoxification and treatment program. Tom Egerbrecht and his staff and all involved stepped up. We're also proud of Judge Ed Stangl and all involved for their work with the Drug and Alcohol Treatment Court, as well as the good work by the, by, uh, the Veterans Court and Charlene Cobb, who's here this evening. A lot of folks stepped up to assist with those two initiatives, and they are far better alternatives to incarceration. Rocky Knoll continues to provide five-star quality service. We established joint emergency dispatch, launched emergency medical dispatching. We're in the midst of significantly improving our courthouse security. We're offering more leadership development opportunities than ever before. We engaged our staff. We had an all-employment engagement survey and summit, recently recognized in the WCA magazine if you didn't see the April issue. In fact, speaking of the magazine and Greg Schnell and Jim Tobese who are in the room, we are wrapping up our work on the transportation complex, consolidating three facilities into one. And despite all of our challenges, despite of everything we work on together to accomplish, to improve, we continue to have healthy fiscal reserves. We continue to lead the state in being frugal with property tax increases. And Wendy, our finance director, and her team continue to be recipients 
of achievements of excellence and the excellent job they do with financial reporting. This does not happen by accident. I wish our reception would have been tonight, Mr. Chairman. I think I may have erred on that. We should be celebrating success tonight, and we will be next week following the county board meeting, and all of our guests are certainly invited to come back. We should be celebrating success because it's the people in this room and our management team and our staff who make these good things happen. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce just a few of these good people, key leaders in our organization that we all rely upon to implement the policies of the county board and to administer the good work of their departments. And I'm going to start from smallest to largest. I'm going to ask them kindly to go on the east side of the wall so all of our viewers at TV8 can see these folks. And I will call them out one by one. So don't file up yet. One by one. Uh, Dave Lafine is not here this evening. He, he had some surgery. He's doing well. But our medical examiner is not here. But he has an annual budget of 202000 He has four employees and 31 years of experience. And as I go through this, focus on that experience a little bit. Charlene Cobb, I see with us our, our evening, our veteran service officer. She has a budget of 266000 three employees. And she's been with Sheboygan County now for 10 years. Carl Bising, our corp counsel. Crystal Fever, I know, had to leave. She just departed because of a conflict in Plymouth. But we have two strong corporation counsels. Carl, in particular, <laughs> has been here now for 18 years. He has a $323,000 budget. And though it says on this sheet he has one employee, he really works with a law firm of, I think, eight, seven and a lot of good people that all provide assistance as needed. Ryan O'Rourke could not be here this evening, our family court commissioner. He's on a much-deserved vacation. He has a $353,000 budget, three employees, four years of experience. John Dolson, our county clerk. Our county clerk has a $454,000 budget, three employees, and has been with us for five years. Cindy Sarkady. Cindy is our area extension director. She's a hybrid. <laughs> A new approach by UW Sheboygan, UW Extension rather. She has a $467,000 budget and three employees here in Sheboygan, co-located with UW Sheboygan. She's been with us for just under a year. Jean Gallimore. Jean is our Human Resources Director. She has a budget of $592,000, five employees. She's been with us five years, and I would be remiss not to call out Penny Elsner, who's probably working on something right now, <laughs> hopefully texting her husband saying, I'll be home soon, right? <laughs> Penny is our deputy HR director and does a tremendous job. Ellen Schleicher. Ellen is our Register of Deeds. She has a $636,000 operating budget, seven employees, and 12 years with Sheboygan County. Joel Armansky. Joel is our District Attorney. A $1.1 million budget, 15 employees, and 11 years of service with Sheboygan County. Wendy Sharnan, Finance Director. Wendy has a $1.5 million budget, 17 employees, three years of experience, though as you know, Wendy is involved with developing the countywide budget, which is $149 million. Aaron Brault, Planning and Conservation Director. Aaron oversees a $2 million budget, has 14 employees and 11 years of experience with Sheboygan County. Chris Lewinsky, IT Director overseeing a $2.1 million budget, seven employees, three years of experience. Melody Lorgi, Clerk of Courts, overseeing a $2.1 million budget, 24 employees, and you would not believe this, 34 years experience with Sheboygan County. Drinking from the fountain of youth. <laughs> Jim Tabeast. Jim Tabeast is our Building Services Director, oversees a $3.5 million budget, oversees 30 employees, 18 years of service with Sheboygan County. Kayla Clinton, Rocky Knoll Administrator, $13.4 million budget, oversees 160 employees. She's been with us for just six months, but hit the ground running. 
Greg Schnell, Transportation Director. $18.9 million budget, 95 employees, 12 years of service, and of course, Greg and Jim have just done a stellar job overseeing the complex and consolidating three facilities into one. Charles Sweet, is Charles with us this evening? Excellent. Charles is our airport superintendent. This was one of our consolidations. We consolidated the airport and highway into a transportation department. Charles oversees a $667,000 budget, has three employees, and has been with us for four years. Sheriff Corey Raisler. $20.4 million budget, 192 employees, 27 years of experience with Sheboygan County. Inspector Jim Rousseau could not be with us tonight, but the inspector as well has been just outstanding and has 30 years of experience working with Sheboygan County. Tom Agerbrecht. Tom Agerbrecht is our Health and Human Services Director. $33.6 million budget, 193 employees, nine years of service to Sheboygan County. Scott Sa Shackelford. Scott here, no, I'm sorry. Scott had a conflict tonight. Shannon Otten had a conflict tonight. And Diane had a conflict tonight. Jackie Moglowski. Jackie is new to our team. Manager, Division of Economic Support. So many of you probably haven't seen Jackie before. We were able to recruit her from Washington County. And welcome, Jackie. Adam, actually, behavioral health. Oh, behavioral health. I had that written down here and read the wrong line. Could I borrow someone's glasses? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Welcome. Welcome, Jackie. And Tim Gessler. Tim is our manager, Division of Economic Support. That was an area where we consolidated with child support when that was in a separate department years ago. Another consolidation. And Tim stepped up and did an excellent job overseeing that and provided a smooth transition. He's been with us now for 10 years. Of course, I'm your county administrator. I mentioned $149 million budget, 825 employees. I've been here 19 years. Who am I missing? Laura. Laura. I wasn't going to introduce Laura tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Henning Lorenz is our county treasurer, and without her, none of us get paid. <laughs> I am so sorry, Laura. Welcome, Laura Henning Lorenz. Let me see where I skipped over you. I got to go back here. Did I skip over anyone else? No, I just skipped your name. A $765,000 budget, eight employees, 15 years with Sheboygan County. Did I miss anyone else? Thank you for pointing that out. So in total, in total, 316 years of experience stand before you right now. 316 years of experience. This is a rock solid team. And on that note, you may be excused. Thank you. Let's put our hands together. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for all you do. And thank you to all the department heads and uh, elected officials on behalf of the, the full board. Thank you very much. Next, we have adoption of rules, chapter two, which we do every two years. Now there, as the memo said, there are no changes. So at this point, I'll look for a motion and a second. Supervisor Wagaman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will um, move that we adopt the resolutions as presented. Thank you, Supervisor Wagaman. Supervisor Koch. A second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Koch. Is there any questions or discussion? Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, we may all vote. Please push your I or nay button. Motions approved unanimously. Thank you. Next, we, I'll turn the elections over to our very capable corporation counsel, Carl Bissing. Carl? Mr. Chair, you need to turn it over to the clerk who has I to know. turn it over to me. I'll turn it over to the clerk, then you can give it to Carl. All right. And the clerk directs corporation counsel to conduct the election of chairperson, vice chairperson, and executive committee members. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. 
All right. Ready to do our organizational election. I used to conduct this according to the usual method. However, last term you codified the usual method into a written format, so now I have to follow a script. So, we are going to elect a chairperson, a vice chairperson, and three additional executive committee members. The first task I have is to appoint three election tellers from among the department heads. So, those department heads who didn't leave are at risk. Uh, first of all, I'll appoint Wendy Sharman, our finance director, so that they will be counted properly. I will appoint Aaron Rault, our planning and conservation director, so that they will not be wasted votes. And I will appoint Sheriff Corey Raisler. No, not because we want to make sure it's done right, but because he's the most junior department head, so he gets done. So I would ask that the tellers come to the teller table. The organizational election shall be conducted by secret ballot. It's the only opportunity you as supervisors have, essentially, to do secret ballots during your tenure as supervisors. Everything else pursuant to the open meeting law must be publicly recorded. But you do get secret ballots here today. So the first vote will be for the Office of County Chairperson and I would entertain nominations. The first vote in each election for a given office shall be the nominating ballot. The Corporation Council shall display the result of the nominating ballot and shall ask all supervisors receiving at least one vote if they accept the nomination. So, what do we do? Do we Shout them out from the floor, or do we nominate by secret ballot? Secret ballot. Secret, secret ballot. ballot. Secret ballot. Secret ballot. <coughs> so, do they have their secret ballots? They do. Yeah. All right. Then those supervisors can write any names they want for nominees. Supervisor Koch is declining his nomination. 
Anybody else? Will it be an opportunity for debate, speech of strength or anything? No. It's a foot No. In that case, I decline to nominate. You decline to nominate. Now, under these rules that you have enacted last round, we have to vote again. Because this was just the nominating ballot. Now we are into the election ballot. Round one. We have one candidate, but there may be write-ins because it is a secret ballot. These are your rules, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> In the interim, please sign your oaths before you leave tonight. Thank you.
would you blame the nomination? Will that uh, enable us not to have to worry again? No. <laughs> That's your rules. All right, Supervisor Martensi declines. We now have first round voting on the sole nominee. We may want to revisit this in our rules. <laughs> <laughs> the election teller said is unreasonable, contains extraneous verbiage or marks, is blank or is cast for a name not nomination, shall be classified as an abstention. One abstention. Okay. Uh, One vote for Martensi. That's an abstention. And 22 for Cox. 22. I certify and declare that Supervisor Koch has a majority and is elected vice chair for this election. Nominating balance for executive committee number one, seat number one. Nominees. Yeah. 
Supervisor Epping. Three. Three. Zegebauer. Supervisor Zegelbauer. Two. Two. Supervisor Dam. Supervisor Dam. One. One. Supervisor Gearing. Supervisor Gearing. Four. Four. Supervisor Martensi. Supervisor. Arthensi. One. One. Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Glavin. Three. Three. Supervisor Hoffman. Supervisor Hoffman. One. Two wins. <coughs> yes. Two wins. One. Supervisor Otten. Supervisor Otten. One. And then Supervisor Prochak. Supervisor Prochak. Five. Five. See, now it gets entertaining, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need me to tell jokes. All right. Do any of the nominees choose to decline their nomination? Supervisor Marthenzi, you're declining? Yes. I've been on the executive duty about half the time I've been on the county board. I think it would be a good opportunity for people who have not had an opportunity to be on the committee to be nominated and elected to. Thank you. Anybody else? Supervisor Ott, you're passing. Thank you. First point of order. Uh, this is executive number one, so if you come to executive number two, uh, if you decline it on one, are you still eligible for two? Sure. Okay. If you want to be inconsistent, but... Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. 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 So, or you can change your mind between that lengthy period of time. Anybody else wish to decline a nomination? Uh, seeing none, I would ask you to vote round one for executive seat number one. Supervisor Epping, four. Supervisor Epping, four. Supervisor Ziegelbauer, one. Supervisor Ziegelbauer, one. Supervisor Dam, three. Supervisor Dam, three. Supervisor Gehring, four. Four. Supervisor Gehring, four. Supervisor Glavin, three. Supervisor Glavin, three. Supervisor Hoffman, one. One. Supervisor Hoffman, one. Supervisor Prochak, seven. 
Supervisor Pro Chat is seven. I do not believe we have a majority. Okay, now I believe we drop off the name, right? Let me read this again. County Supervisor, I'll continue to cast one vote per ballot for one of the names placed in nomination for the office at election by writing the last name of the nominee. No, we do not drop off. We continue to vote. Until we drop off. We'll have to revisit this, don't we? These are your rules, Supervisor. Yes, does anyone wish to decline? Supervisor Ziegelbauer is declining, so we want you for that time. Now I notice Supervisor Power has left. So our, we have 23 supervisors present. We still need 12. Supervisor Epping is one. Supervisor Epping one. Supervisor 
Dam 2, Supervisor Dam 2, Supervisor Gehring 5, Supervisor Gehring 5, Supervisor Hoffman 1, Supervisor Hoffman 1, and Supervisor Project 14. Supervisor Project 14, zero for that. Supervisor Bottom, zero All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You've kept me from having to write onto the next sheet. <laughs> and so congratulations to Supervisor Project. <laughs> Supervisor Project is elected executive committee seat number one. We're now on to executive committee seat number two. Nomination ballot. Everybody for round one, executive seat number two. 
Yes. 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 Right. Ziegelbauer. Two. Supervisor Ziegelbauer, two votes. Hoffman, one. Supervisor Hoffman, one vote. Gladden, three. Supervisor Gladden, three votes. Gearing, eleven. Supervisor Gearing, eleven votes. Epping, five. Supervisor Epping, five votes. Damp, one. Supervisor Damp, one vote. Does anybody wish to withdraw the nomination? Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Anybody else? All right, we are on to round two. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Your choices are Supervisor Hoffman, Supervisor Glavin, Supervisor Guerin, Supervisor Epping, and Supervisor Gale. Only vote once, ladies and gentlemen.
Supervisor Hoffman, two. Supervisor Hoffman. Two. And Supervisor Glavin, three. Supervisor Glavin. Three. Carl, I think. Supervisor Glavin. Uh, Supervisor Boswell declines. Does anybody else decline who's been nominated? I decline. Supervisor Albert declines. Thank you, gentlemen. Supervisor Boswell. So your candidates are Supervisor Damp, Supervisor Ziegelmauer, Supervisor Epic, Supervisor Hoffman, and Supervisor Lavin.
Okay, real quick, Dick Beavis said I have 45 seconds and no more to say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I will keep it very short. Thank you very much. Uh, I said on the radio uh, a couple months ago, there is no I in county government. I sincerely believe that. It's all about we. I think from you, when we succeed, we succeed together. And I want to thank you for that. I did want to make special note of my two brothers who are in the back. Uh, Father Gary, thank you for uh, doing the invocation. And my other brother Jim is there from, he does live in Mantua County, but we still like him. That's, that's all right. And actually, actually, Jim has uh, coached Two Rivers basketball for 20 some years. He's a Hall of Fame basketball coach. Very proud of him. And uh, my wife, Susie, thank you very much. He coached Aaron Brault, by the way. Aaron, can, you can talk to Aaron about that. So, small world, and thank you, Susie. So, Vern? Thank you, I'm honored and humbled to be selected the vice chairman for the county board. I look forward to working with everybody over the course of the next two years, and I will do the, the job to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you, Vern. And I too would echo uh, to George, thank you for your service as vice chair for the last two years. Thank you very much, George. Next, uh, we have adjournment. So if Supervisor Bemis would. <laughs> thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Is there a second? Supervisor Obler. Mark missing. Right. I, I vote. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. I wasn't worried about that. <laughs> I don't think there's any discussion, so please push your I button and we will stand adjourned till next Tuesday. All right, we are adjourned.